The first season of Primal blew away fans and critics alike, bagging five Emmys, two Annies, and a Saturn nomination. So yeah, you're damn right it's getting a second season, which premiered literally yesterday, I think. Here to tell us what's next for the best human dinosaur duo since Fred and Dino, please welcome Primal's creator, Gendy Tartakovsky. Hello, good to see you. Yes, yes. <laughs> So your your career, your reputation like precedes you, and I feel like Primal is really you just kind of kicking the door down and being like, here's what I wanted to do. And season one has just completely kicked ass. You obviously won a ton of awards. People love it. You're back for season two, the continuing adventures. What were you able to do with season two that wasn't possible the first time around? Well, I think for season one, we're trying to figure out if it's gonna work, right? No dialogue, um, you know, very emotional, violent type stories. Are the characters going to connect all those things? And once we, and how complex can we get without any dialogue, right? And if you watch the first 10, we got more and more complex, you know, uh, as we got down through the season. And so once we realized that's successful, we were like, all right, we got to go much, much further now. And so for the second set, uh, for the second season, we have 10 episodes and it's all one story, number one. So that's already amping it up. And the emotions are higher, the, you know, the, the adventures, the fights, everything is getting more intense. But at the, at the core, what was the best result from the first season is the, the characters overpowered the violence, right? And because I didn't want just the gore to stand out. It was always for a reason, mm -hmm. right? And so and now we're really pushing the emotional stakes of the characters and their relationship. So season one concluded with the introduction of a new character who is uh, the first one to speak words, really, yes. as opposed to just screaming and grunting, which is who's Mira. Uh, and you're still not doing like full-on just dialogue. It's not like exposition dumping. But uh, how does this sort of addition of speech, rather than just guttural sounds, sort of change the dynamic and how you approach telling a story? It was something that we were really sensitive about because we didn't want to change the dynamic of the show or how the show feels. And so any dialogue that we brought in is in its authentic language, right? And so there's no subtitles. So it's really, you still don't understand it unless you can speak ancient Gaelic or ancient Arabic. Uh, and so it feels like it's the same. So there's a, there's a sincerity to it. Nice. Um, so I love that you are, like clearly there's a, there's a style guide. There's like a cohesive sort of primal rule set for what makes sense and what doesn't. But yeah. this is not about scientific or historical accuracy. You're just having fun. Do you have any sort of internal guidelines about like, how do you, how do you sort of find that balance? It's, uh, it actually always starts from history. So pretty much every creature that we come up with or we use, I definitely do the research and I try to find something that's very similar or if it's actually right. And now that we're going into a new world of obviously with more civilized civilization, we definitely are historically accurate to a degree, right? And, um, but the most important thing, it starts from this truthful place, right? And then we kind of twist it a little bit of what for what it needs to be. But because it's uh, based on reality, there's, a, um, there's an honesty to it. Mm. Was there a historical period or sort of theme you were most excited to implement in season two? Um, I guess probably Vikings. Nice. <laughs> but that's a very I've always safe liked answer. Vikings, yeah. and so, uh, yeah, that was always something I wanted to depict. And we did it in a, in a, in a very different, unique way, I think. Nice. Uh, so the first season has a lot of sort of uh, Conan, Frank Frazetta, Fire and Ice vibes to it. And I think you've spoken about how season two is a little more heavy metal in the, you know, metal hurlant sense. Right. Uh, can you sort of, I guess, tease what that means in terms of scale and presentation? <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's all heavy metal because it is, you know, heavy metal is the, is the rated R animated mm -hmm. thing, right? Especially when we were kids, that's all we had as far as that goes. And so it is just, um, how can I tease it without giving everything away? It's just epic, right? Mm -hmm. The scale is beyond anything that we've done. And I, we think we, it's still television, right? So mm -hmm. we still have to figure out a way how to make it work. And so uh, that was the first challenge. The second challenge is how to do a story when you head into a civilized world where it doesn't become cliche instantly, right? And that was a, a big fear because we didn't want to break what worked. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think that was the biggest challenge. And so, actually, the first story that we were going to do, we totally got rid of, and we reimagined a different path for the characters to take. And where we ended up, uh, I couldn't be more excited about because it's surprising, it's shocking, uh, it's there's a lot of sadness to it, and there's joy, and it's really, I like to say, it's just a ride. You yeah. know, I think the audience has really got to prepare for the unexpected, 
I think, and I'm kind of warning you a bit, <laughs> but it's all it's all super fun, and um, yeah, I think we're this is probably we're all so pr everybody who worked on it is we're just so proud of it. Well, it's it's incredible, and I'm I'm just I'm really happy to see you kind of doing what you want to do and just getting creative and having fun. That said, you have some other projects kind of in the works that I'm dying to know more about. Unicorn Warriors Eternal. Yes, this has some sort of it's. I feel like it's got a little bit of like. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, a little bit of Thundercats, some like Tezuka in there, <laughs> but I also can't get a read on what it's like. How would you, how would you sort of explain it using known? Known? Yeah, yeah I think uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the comic book, was definitely the in, uh, is an we don't inspiration. We do talk about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's an inspiration, and, um, and Tezuka, Miyazaki, it's, I wanted to do big world building, much more complicated, twisty plots, which I usually don't do, but I, I thought that this story, uh, really demands it. And really the biggest thing is to have these cartoony characters, right? Uh, emote and have emotion. And so there's, it's dramatic, it's comedic, there's action, and there's mystery. Awesome. Right? And it's, it's the biggest thing we've ever done mm. as far as uh, the, the story goes, I think. Now you have one other thing. Um, you've, I've, I've seen what you can do with like, you know, M-rated, R-rated violence. You can have fun with that. Yeah. You have an R-rated comedy in the works about a dog who finds out he's getting neutered and has 24 hours That's to right. do bad yeah. dog stuff. <laughs> what, how much bad dog stuff do you have to do to nail an R rating for an animated comedy? Well, the, the R rated is easy, right? It's, okay. to, it's to, the create, to create a character, right? Because I didn't want to just do another, you know, like a, just for our sakes, right? I wanted it to have everything that I like, which is great characters, humor that comes from co uh, character, not so much just one-liners and pop culture references, right? And it's 2D, right? And to have really good animation. And we've kind of, I made kind of a wish list of 10 animators that I wanted always to work with, but because I was always in TV, I never could. And now I think we pretty much get almost every one. Oh, nice. And so now we have our designs kind of, you know, again, kind of cartoony, but animated in this amazing feature way with this rated R theme. And so, it's raunchy, but it looks really good, and there's great character, and there's heart. So we call it kind of like a unicorn, because if we're I love it. 2D animation, yeah. it's never really happened. So you've got Unicorn Warriors Eternal, and you've got <laughs> Fixed, the movie coming sometime soon. But in the meantime, there's season two of Primal, which just premiered. You can find new episodes every week on Adult Swim and HBO Max. Gendy, thank you so much. Congratulations. Awesome, thank it's you. It's a pleasure to chat with you. Yes. For everything cartoons, dinosaurs, cavemen, all that good stuff, IGN's got you covered. See ya.